everybody. I'm Cassidy, one of your Indianapolis Colts cheerleaders, and you're watching the Believe in Colts podcast. Welcome back to Believe in Colts. I'm Lawrence Owen. With me as usual are my guys Gerard Powers and Rodney McLeod, and we have a ton to talk about today as we already seen the uh, Super Bowl is now officially over. There were some interesting things and tidbits to talk about with the Super Bowl, and today we're going to sit here and discuss them, right? Uh, one of the big things that I think that we should be talking about is – things that aren't being talked about as much about the Super Bowl because there was a lot of push about, you know, the the holding call on Bradbury at the end, which, you know, he admitted to at the end of it. But there, to me, in my opinion, whether or not you, you think it should be called or should not be called, that's one play in a game with hundreds of plays in it, you know, and so – in my opinion, it shouldn't even came down to whether or not the refs could make the call or not. But we'll get into that in a little bit. Uh, Gerard, how are you and 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 um, things going on in your life right now? Everything's going. Can't complain. Um, kids got me busy. You know, springtime, everybody's doing multiple sports and weekends are filled up. So it's a lot of fun, but uh, a lot of busy family type stuff that we got to do. But uh, can't complain about it. Blessed, blessed to be able to do it. Absolutely. Welcome back from your uh, little stint on vacation there, Rodney. Uh, how are you? And and hopefully you might feel as though your batteries are a little bit recharged now after that little stint. Yeah, man, I definitely feel refreshed, uh, fresh off the island. Uh, came back uh, with a nice little tan. Uh, had an opportunity to catch the game out there uh, with some people, some strangers, really. <laughs> I, I, I've never met before, but it, it was a good time. Uh, property did a real good job, man. Shout out to Sandals. And, yeah, just feeling good. Uh, you know, Gerard, I, I definitely see him, man. He he is a traveling dad. He does it all. <laughs> <laughs> he does. At the a AAU events, then he transferred man. over. Now he the coach for the 707 <laughs> league, I see. <laughs> <laughs> and then last night I'm a second grade basketball coach. So, you know, it's yeah. a lot of fun, man. These kid, kids keep you going. Kids keep you going. Man, so I, I lost it. my voice a little bit. Yeah, I'm a little hoarse. A lot of yelling this past weekend. Yelling at the refs. Like, <laughs> no question. <like> <laughs> no question. <laughs> Doesn't matter what sport you're playing, you're yelling at the refs. No question. Right, right? <laughs> no question about it. All right. Well, Hey guys, uh, I want to remind everyone that Bet Online remains your number one source for all your sports betting this season, everything from the NFL and bowl season to esports. You'll always find the latest odds, team matchup info, player news, game trends at Bet Online. Bet Online features live betting, pre contests, live scores for almost any sport or game imaginable. We're the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your favorite leagues and events. Head to betonline.ag to join and receive your 50% welcome bonus with your first deposit. Make sure to use that promo code BELIEVE, that's B L E A V, to receive your rewards. Bet Online, where the game starts. All right, so the Super Bowl, guys, uh, that was a, a very fun game. Boy, did I hit that total score dead on. I just got the mm -hmm. wrong team, man. <laughs> That's messed up. I yeah. I, I predicted I, I about saw, 38 to 35, right? No, nah, and I saw uh, Nate Burleson actually predicted the same score, but with the Chiefs winning, he hit it on the head as well. Oh, yeah. wow. I don't know wow. how y'all did that. <laughs> you well, you would have been two of, of, yeah, of however many people in the States, you know, who got that or watching the game, billions. Whatever it was. But My goodness. It's impressive. Well, I, I've hit pretty – I'm usually pretty close on total scores. I, I'm, I've am i I've always been pretty good at kind of looking ahead, uh, seeing matchups and things of that nature. But I, ju I just felt like, like I said in the previous game, I felt like the referees were just going to let a lot of things go. They didn't at the end of the game. But for the most part, I think, you know, unless it's, it, it was a, egregious, they were going to let them play the game in general and I, I feel like for the most part they did that what, what do you what do you think Gerard Man, I thought it was a well um play game from both teams I thought the refs let the guys play for the most part and that's what you want in these big type games you don't want you know a bunch of penalties or anything like that you kind of want both sides to duke it out uh and I thought it was a clean game for the most part I mean I know they said it wasn't you know too many penalties called but when you watch the game it didn't seem like 
you know, anything egregious was going on from either side. It just seemed like a well-played competitive game. Rodney? Yeah, I thought they did a, a, a good job uh, officiating the game. Obviously, you had the the one play that everyone has the biggest fuss, o- fuss over. And, of course, you hate to see the game in, in, in that way, but you have to – you know, respect the cause. It's a part of the game. Uh, but at the end of the day, I think it's credit to the players, you know, for playing disciplined football throughout. Like Gerard said, it was a clean game. And that I don't think that had a lot to do with the refs. I think it was more so because of the way the players, you know, played in that game, understanding everything you do is magnified, man, mm-hmm. you know, to to the extreme level. Um, every inch, every blade of grass matters. Uh, and so, you know, you have to tip your hat to the players and the coaching staff for having both teams, you know, both of their teams prepared and ready um, and playing discipline and, and yeah, competitive football at the end of the day. Jalen Hurts had himself a game. Mm. Wow. Over oh, yeah. 400 yards, I think four touchdowns and, and you know, rushing like crazy. Uh, what out. did you gain? Um, from watching Jalen Hurts on on in the Super Bowl, Gerard? I mean, it's been a lot of talk about Jalen all season. You know, everybody's saying that, you know, Philly, it's easy to play quarterback. They got all these weapons. They got a great system. You know, anybody can come in and, you know, and, uh, and, and do that job. But I think on this stage, when everybody's watching, where every single play is magnified, when the pressure is on, you know, and everybody sees every movement, every detail of the game, you know, it's only so many people that can rise up to that moment and take advantage of that situation. And I think what Jalen showed in the Super Bowl, it should not be not one person ever doubt him again about being a franchise quarterback. Uh, all year he's been proving to us that, you know, he was the man for the job. He was ready to lead this team and do all that. And us in the media, uh, not saying us in particular, but just the media period, you know, kept trying to have these storylines about, you know, it's it's the system. It's not the quarterback. And I think Jalen just proved that he's on pace or his trajectory is to be one of the best quarterbacks in this league. And going into next year, his name should definitely be mentioned with the rest of the guys as one of the better quarterbacks in the NFL. Absolutely. Rodney? Man, Birdman said it, man. Put some respect on his name. <laughs> you know, after after that performance, uh, what is there left to say, honestly? You know, I said on the on our uh, podcast last week that I felt as though the Chiefs would do a good job at stopping a run, and they did that. Yeah. And they forced, you know, Jalen to have to throw the ball and be a quarterback. And he proved that he can throw the ball at a high level, uh, the accuracy – you know, that you saw multiple times, you know, the post route or the or the big 792 to A.J. Brown, the the mm-hmm. um, the throw down the sideline to Devontae Smith both times. You know, the first one, obviously, you know, was a tough um, was a tough uh, catch to make, obviously rule incomplete. But the next one, you know, set them up big and just, you know, again, like we like he's shown all year is his ability to to stay poised in, in, in the biggest moments of the game. You know, they go down. Mahomes is having an incredible second half. And then he goes down, being down eight, and rally his team back in, in maybe five plays, right? And then he ca- finished it off with a, a two-point conversion with his legs. And, and you see his ability to be able to take over a game. And that's something that you can't necessarily account for. You know, the Chiefs, I mean, honestly, if they didn't have Jalen Hurts on that team – you know, a, a couple times situations, fourth and five, a mm-hmm. uh, couple third down calls, it, it, you know, the game may have been uh, completely different, right? It could have been a larger deficit than what it was. And so, man, I just think, you know, for Jalen, he deserves his respect. Uh, he's going to be uh, one of the best quarterbacks around uh, in this league for some time to come. And and a matchup that we can look forward to, man, between, you know, every time those two quarterbacks go at it. Uh, you know, two black quarterbacks that are very inspiring, you know, for the black community and a lot of kids out there watching, you know, knowing that their dreams could come true and that, you know, they true, they can actually play the quarterback position. So uh, much respect to both quarterbacks and, of course, Jalen Hurts. Jalen did have a play in this game that, uh, in my opinion, probably kind of made things a little bit, a, a lot more difficult for the Eagles. And that was, where the, the unforced fumble that was a scoop and score for the Chiefs. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm wondering what you guys saw of that play and and probably how that affected the total game in general. Gerard? 
Uh, I mean, it was just an unfortunate play. You know, it wasn't like somebody knocked the ball out of his hands. I mean, sometimes stuff like that just happens and, you know, the ball bounces the other way, goes with the Chiefs, and they pick it up and score. But the one thing that uh, I took from that play was just a momentum changer. Philly was in control of the game at that moment, and it seemed like Philly was, you know, about to drive the ball back down the field and score again, where Chiefs was kind of on the ropes a little bit, trying to get a stop on defense. And then all of a sudden, boom, that fumble happens to, to tie the game up. And uh, and you can just tell the momentum shifted, and the Chiefs took that play from that play on forward the Chiefs rode the momentum for the rest of the game. And that's what championships veteran type teams do. You know, they try to take advantage of every miscue that, you know, the opponent gives you and just try to ride that momentum. And this game right here was in in particular a game of uh, momentum, you know, and you just you just felt the Chiefs just kept riding that momentum wave. I know I keep saying that word, but I, I truly feel that was the reason why the Chiefs won the game. It won necessarily you know, the X's and O's, even though some of these play designs from Andy Reid was phenomenal. Uh, but, you know, when you got a game that's going back and forth and, uh, you know, you're trying to get a stop on defense, sometimes you need the ball to just bounce your way sometimes. And that's what happens with the Chiefs. Rodney? Yeah, what I saw in that play, and I know Nick Sirianni very well and how they're coached over there. And they are coached very well in ball security. You know, they have five different styles of the way you should protect the ball, you know, in, in close uh, quarters. Um, you know, whether, you know, you see defenders, you don't see defenders, sideline, body, body ball protection, like they go over these things consistently and make an emphasis of it. And so, you know, when you see the play, you see Jalen, you know, trying to switch the ball as defenders are, are getting close. And I think, you know, that's what happened on that play is, you know, a situation where he probably should have just held the ball and, and whatever arm necessary, but trying to defend off defenders who, man, credit to the the Chiefs, you know, linebackers in general. Uh, I think he's bold in 32. Baller. Yeah, he baller. Man, I, like, he, he's a baller. Uh, and that was really my first time seeing him up close and personal, you know, and I was very impressed. I mean, anything on that field moving like he's a part of and so you got a credit to man rallying to the ball swarming to the football population um you know as a defender man gerard knows we talk about it good things happen when you run to the ball um and he was there to uh capitalize on on a huge uh momentum swing for that team and and, and keep keep the chiefs in the game um yep. because that was the thing about it you know you go now 14 it's very hard to come back versus philly uh, and and really, when you think of that game, the Chiefs needed every possession possible to yep. walk away with that victory. So huge play for the defense. Uh, I said it again, like turnover, turnovers were big. And I think the two games that the Eagles lost this year, they lost the turnover battle. Absolutely. Um, an another re another thing that I believe that is a big deal when it comes to playoff football, we talk about it and talk about it. Uh, you got to have a run game. You got to have a good defense, right? And in the run game, you you spoke about it earlier how the Chiefs really held the Eagles' run game down. Uh, between Gainwell and Scott and Sanders, they all combined for under three yards of carry. And then you go and flip it and go look at the Chiefs and Isaiah Pacheco, Pacheco, something like that. Pacheco. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, 15 carries over five yards of carry. You know, uh, th these are th – these are – including that one touchdown, right? They were able to run the football against this Philly defense, and I believe that helped them a ton because it kept their playbook completely open and able to, uh, you know, be, keep the Philadelphia Eagles defense guessing throughout the entire game. Yeah, I thought the yeah. Chiefs O-line uh, for the last two weeks, the only thing they heard about is how great, you know, Philly's, you know, defensive front is and, and, you know, the sacks and the pressure and just how the style that those guys play with. And uh, you could tell that the Chiefs O-line took it personal. Uh, Pat Mahomes didn't get a sack and they rushed for, I want to say one over 150 or 160 mm -hmm. or something like that as a team. I mean, that's just a, that's a true championship team. And, um, you know, it was kind of funny to, not funny, but it was kind of, 
intriguing to see that stat because as you watch the game, you kind of notice like, dang, Pat Mahomes is not getting hit. Man, they 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 haven't had a sack. Man, he is, uh, he do got time to do this and that. Man, they are running the ball successfully. And uh, once you're able to run the ball, you can control things. You know, when it's second and short, when it's third and short, like you said, uh, Lawrence, your whole playbook is open. You know, it's a different ball game compared to calling a game where it's third and long all the time, or when it's uh, you know, compared to when it's third and five below. You know, so uh, I th I thought the 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 battle in the trenches, uh, as, as we say as defenders i thought it was won by the chiefs and that's how you win big games like this rodney yeah i, I look at a few things and you know you look at the like gerard said the battle of the trenches you you look at the eagles offensive line that didn't allow a sack you look at the chiefs offensive line didn't allow the sack but you know the difference was the rush lanes that the chiefs were able to create for their running backs uh jalen hurts is a different beast right like they had to rely on hurts you know, to keep the Chiefs honest in the run game. And I think what you saw from the Chiefs was on both sides was a balanced attack. You know, you saw them stay ahead of the chains and that's what you want, you know, to not put yourself in those second and 15 or second and 10. Like everything was manageable for for both sides for the for majority of the game. And that's credit to both coaches for staying true to the run game. And, and that's the biggest the biggest question mark for Andy Reid, right? When you have a Patrick Mahomes, you can kind of lean on his God gifting ability, right? That Mahomes is going to make everything all right. But what you saw was, you know, a true balance attack, understanding the threat that the defensive line of the Eagles, you know, can cause for not only your offensive line, but your quarterback, who's also immobile uh, for a little bit. And so I, I got to tip my hat to Andy Reid, offensive guru, man, and also Mahomes for just, playing Make quarterback it and Make making it happen, it happen man. <laughs> like just whatever I'm given, I'm going to, to do. I'm not going to turn the ball over. I'm not going to put my team at risk. He played a very smart game. I mean, he's clearly one of the best to do it. Like the ability, how fast they can score. It's impressive. And like I said, they needed every possession possible, but uh, the chiefs just all around, just, you know, offensively man came to play and, um, you know, you got to credit, you know, Pacheco and that offensive line for uh, playing a huge part in that game. Hat off to Andy <laughs> Reid. I'm telling you, there was um, a couple scores for the Chiefs uh, where he had a design play. I guess he saw something in the Eagles defense that he took advantage oh, yeah. of. And I just want you guys, uh, either one of you, to break down the – it's the motion play that a, ended yeah, up getting guys wide open. So it's yeah, a copy. It's a yeah. It's a copycat lead. When you watch uh, Philly play Jacksonville uh, during the season, Doug Peterson, who you know comes from Andy Reid, ran the exact same plays and scored scored on Philly with it. So when you know that the defense is in man coverage. Uh, when you do a lot of the speed motions, a lot of times it's communication that goes on on defense with that to where you might be rocking and rolling with somebody to where if it's a fast motion, the safety's going to come from over the top and you're going to replace the safety as a corner. And it, it um, and you have different responsibilities when that happens. So when that motion happens and the safety's gone, you're basically now wired to think like a safety because you're replacing him and in, uh, in his spot. And when you look at the play with the Chiefs, and uh, I want to say it was my man Slay. Soon as the motion going, he's trying to look at the safety to communicate, mm -hmm. and it happened so dang fast. He didn't even realize that he came back. So, like you said, it's a great play design, but it's a play that uh, Andy Reid uh, took from Doug Peterson because when they played Jacksonville, Jacksonville scored on it on the exact same motion, exact same play, exact same situation. Is there a yeah. situation there, Rodney, where you uh, you can do something to? adjust to something like that when it's when, when it's like a cancellation in in the motion so what happened you know to Gerard's point he's correct but you see the first time there's a safety in the middle of the field right and you go over this often they the eagles have identified before for the past two weeks who are the jet motion guys more than mm -hmm. likely it's tony 19 and it's 24 scott moore those things are true right so the minute that you get an indicator before the snap. Hey, I'm anticipating this guy getting ready to come in motion. You see the communication going on with Slay and I think Garner Johnson on the play. And it's a great 
schemed play by by the Chiefs. And the minute that Slay goes to replace the safety, he now returns into the flat and nobody's there. The second play, right, you go back and now they catch them in zero coverage. Mm -hmm. Now Avante is now responsible for him man-to-man all over the field. There's nobody he's communicating with in the back end to help him because the worst thing that you're fearful of as a DB is a guy beating you all the way across the field into the flat or jet sweep, right? And so you want to get another defender over there. So Avante now is anticipating, look, I have to beat him over to the other side. When he does that again, he returns. So the the thing that you can the one thing that you can try to coach is look, fellas, we might need to have better eye discipline yep. and stand and looking at the you know the receiver just a little longer because of this. But again, the Chiefs, the Eagles never saw that on film from the Chiefs. So again. It's just, man, <laughs> yeah. tip your hat to Andy Reid, man. Perfect play calling, anticipation, uh, knowing what the Eagles defense would be in, and it was executed well. Yeah, I believe so, too. Um, any final words about the Super Bowl and, 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 and what you gained from this, uh, Gerard? I thought it was a well-played game. One of the best Super Bowls I watched uh, just in a while, just far as just heavyweights, just exchanging blows, exchanging punches. Uh, Early on, I felt like Philly uh, was about to kind of just control the game, you know, hot start, and you just can just feel that energy going, and then all of a sudden, boom, uh, that fumble happens, and it kind of just gave the Chiefs more life, and uh, it was just like a heavyweight matchup, man. It it was fun to watch. Both quarterbacks played great. Uh, Both teams played clean for the most part. And, uh, you know, at the end of the day, the better team won, and that was Pat Mahomes. And I think I can officially say now that they're in the middle of a dynasty. I think that's two out of three Super Bowls, five straight AFC championships. Pat Mahomes just cemented himself as one of the best to ever do it. You know, he's only 26 years old, so we're probably going to see this uh, for another 10, 12, 15 years, however long he wants to play. Uh, But I thought it was just a well-played, great Super Bowl. Absolutely. Rodney. Yeah, a uh, great Super Bowl. Uh, both teams laid it on the line. Uh, they they all played at a high level. I think both teams, you know, should really be obviously proud of themselves for what they put on tape. Um, and it was a competitive game, and that's what you want to see. You know, you're going to get the best from everybody on that field. Um, and it showed, and, and obviously, you know, I think the experience aspect of Mahomes and, and Andy Reid uh, was a deciding factor in this game. And – you know, Andy Reid from the beginning being able to slow down that defensive line uh, with his play calling, uh, trusting in his quarterback, Mahomes, him landing on the line, you know, understanding he's at a high ankle sprain. You know, he aggravated early in the game, but that didn't stop him. You know, you see Jalen Hurts, man, willing his team. You know, like I said, man, it, it, it was a game that you you couldn't you couldn't go to the bathroom. It, you right. know, like you you just it was one of those, man, you wanted to just see more. And I, and I think that's why. You know, so many people were, again, so frustrated by the way that the game ended was because you wanted to see, all right, you know, Jalen Hurts is going to have X amount of time to go down. And is he going to mm-hmm. save the day, you know, for the Eagles and, and, and will his team to a victory? But, um, you know, you, you credit the Chiefs. Uh, they play a great second half and they're world champions. Well. Thank you again, guys, for coming on and and, uh, talking uh, about the Super Bowl. Thank you, everybody, for watching Believe in Colts, brought to you by Bet Online. I am Lawrence Owen. That's Gerard Powers, Rodney McLeod. And until next time, as usual, go Colts. Do you believe? 